Welcome back everyone. Thanks a lot for coming back. Thanks a lot for uh, the subscriptions. Uh, a lot of new subscriptions since I posted the Train Fest video. So I don't know if the Train Fest uh, turned out to be a key word that everyone was looking for or, um, you know, honestly, I, I think that sometimes depending on the topic, uh, when you look at suggested videos, when you're watching a certain video, you'll get uh, recommendations as to what you can what else you want to watch and I know that uh, in watching some of the other Train Fest videos um, I noticed that mine would pop up on the side so I don't know maybe that helped draw people so uh, any any new subscribers I appreciate it thank you for the subscription to all my old subscribers of course I always appreciate those subscriptions as well um, no field trips this week uh, just working down in the basement again now that I've got uh, the project done a lot of the times I like to just work on little things that have been building up like uh, as I was switching some cars around uh, in and out of my storage boxes I realized there were a couple uh, tank cars that had a few pieces that had come loose oh shoot I gotta fix those and you know just little things like that uh, so the long and the short of it what I've decided to do is actually work on some background buildings in the new area uh, I've got some a uh, couple of sidings and I've been switching I did some switching in that area and I thought you know let, let's work on this area so I've got a, uh, several different kits that I'm going to use and I'll, uh, I'll kind of go through those and show you what I'm looking at using but then I also picked up um, some uh, this is the first time I've, I've worked with uh, Plast trucks usually I work with evergreen uh, styrene but I was at uh, my local hobby shop, one of my local hobby shops. I was actually at Greenfield News and Hobby because I was in the area. And I put a link to their website, but they don't really sell anything online. Uh, their presence is more brick and mortar, which, you know, good for them. Uh, so if you're in the area, Greenfield News and Hobby, it's, it caters to everything. Uh, where, say, Hiawatha Hobbies is more of a, a very trained oriented. Uh, Greenfield is a little of everything. Like Greenfield News and Hobby. It's um, a lot of magazines, a lot of paper related articles, but then they've also got uh, almost like a Michaels, if you will, ex uh, except uh, a little bit more hobby than a Michaels. So anyway, um, so I bought this Plast Truck siding uh, and it's uh, HO corrugated siding and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to basically scratch build somewhat of a warehouse um, maybe like a machinery building if you will um, and I'll, I'll, I'll have to show you but anyway but the long and the short of it uh, this is a little bit thinner than uh, the evergreen the evergreen uh, siding can kind of stand alone um, the plast trucks is is double-sided and I think I'm going to have to back this and I'm going to have to create basically a shell out of the styrene that I have and then apply this over the top like uh, like siding. Um, but I think it'll still work out well, uh, but it'll be my first foray into working with plastro, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. So uh, nothing else real new to show, so I'm going to switch over to demonstrate where I'm thinking and what I'm thinking and, and then we'll go from there. So the thought behind what I'm planning on building for this background building is kind of a shingles plant of sorts. And the neat thing about a shingles plant um, may not necessarily be something that we have here in Wisconsin. I'm sure that there are, and I could do some research to find out. Um, this is going to be more of a freelance thing. I don't know if Wisconsin Central actually served the shingles plant. But the neat thing about a shingles plant is there's, uh, they receive quite a few different cars. Um, especially depending on what type of shingles that they're making, whether they're fiberglass or asphalt shingles. So we're going to go ahead and assume that they all receive several different things. The, the nice thing about it is, is it gives you the opportunity to receive uh, and drop off um, multiple different cars. So you got box cars for outbound product or inbound paper products. Um, in inbound aggregate cars for sand for the you know granules that go on top of the shingles uh, and then possibly even tank cars delivering any type of liquid materials if it's an asphalt shingle maybe there's asphalt tank cars uh, things like that tar 
uh, you know, that, that whole, any types of adhesives uh, that they might be using. So, the great thing about it is, is that a few sidings can suddenly have quite a few cars dropped off. So the kits I'm working with, um, and this I, I don't have the box for anymore, but this is a Walther's background uh, building, and it's I think it's like their electrical motors uh, kit or electric something. I, it's a background building, and I'm really turning into a background building. And it's meant to actually be, um, uh, you know, like I think like a, a two inches deep. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm turning this actually into, uh, I'm going to put windows in this, and this is actually going to be on the backdrop itself. So it's not going to have, it's going to be a very low relief structure, if you will. This is about as thick as it's going to be. And I've already started doing some work on it. Um, I painted the brick one color just uh, one day when I had my airbrush out, I airbrushed the brick, and then I came back with a real watered down um, like dirt color and that gave me my mortar lines and I'm going to mask those off and then paint the, the rest of the structure and and then two of these doors will end up being well two of these windows or doors will end up being um, for uh, delivery uh, so I can drop box cars off so we'll have that here and we'll have doors and probably an awning possibly that sticks out over the top but we'll see as we get into that and then uh, I was going to go ahead and do a couple of propane tanks just to say that the facility receives propane tanks and, and works with uh, a propane uh, for some of its processes. So that will give me an opportunity to drop off tank cars with propane in it. And, and then finally, uh, this is the Medusa cement plant. And uh, this is a older version of it. I think I, I bought this off of uh, one of the you know, HO interchange group or something like that. Um, but instead of being a cement plant, this will just be silos for the aggregate material and, um, and stuff like that. So this, this kit will work out for, for that purpose. So I plan to hopefully do the uh, silos um, the same that I did on the grain tower and use the same technique for getting the separate um, you know, sections of each cylinder. So we'll see if I uh, go that route again. And then finally, um, in the midst of it all, I'll have the warehouse that I'm going to make out of the Plastrux. We'll interconnect all the different sections. So let's go over to the layout and I'll show you where I'm thinking uh, I'm going to put all this stuff. So here's the section of the layout that I'm uh, talking about. And as you can see, I've got a siding that comes uh, it comes down over this way and goes to the backdrop there. And so this will be the uh, receiving facility or the unload, you know, the outbound uh, finished product. In between that background building and then the grand jewels. Um, where the aggregate will come in. This is where I'm thinking about putting the kit bashed um, Plastrux uh, warehouse uh, processing area. Um, I'll have to do some research and find out what that building's actually called. Uh, but I figure I can make that extend out and have somewhat a little bit more dimension, maybe be on an angle to follow the track a little bit. And then here I'll have the, well, Medusa cement plant, but this will be the aggregates area here and then next to it will be the propane facility. So you can see I've got a good, a good siding off there. That'll give me a decent amount of room for multiple cars and then tank cars on the end there. So, so one of the things right off the bat, um, there were inserts in this kit uh, for putting in the, the bay doors uh, for the receiving doors. And unfortunately, uh, I really kind of didn't plan ahead and didn't paint these at the same time that I painted the rest of the, the brick. So I'm going to have to go back now and, and paint these and try and get them to match. And if they don't, well, that's okay. Sometimes you know, brick buildings have multiple shades of brick. If something was filled in or patched uh, you know, after the initial building was built. So this could just be uh, an example of that. So. I'll have to do that. 
get those painted. And then I need 16 windows, and the great thing is they're all on one sprue. Uh, so this should make this easier to paint. Uh, so there's some advantages and disadvantages right now. Uh, it is December, or November rather, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, I don't like to spray paint indoors, but it's only 20, I think it's 32 today. It's actually a little bit warmer. So I'm going to run outside and I'm going to just put a base coat of gray on these. Um, I've got a, a rattle can of, of gray that I've used multiple times. I'm going to do that. I'm going to just get a base coat of gray over these and then the same with uh, the doors. And I, have, I might have shown this in the past, but this is just a paint stick some double-sided sticky tape and then I can uh, apply the doors. Okay, so I got some painting items out of the way here and uh, I went ahead and it turns out I used this um, Iraqi sand uh, color from Vallejo and again I used instead of um, paint brushing or airbrushing on actually I think I airbrushed this part but I just went ahead with the uh, cosmetic wedge again and, and uh, dabbed it on to uh, the new panels and then once these dry I'm going to come back with a wash like I did on here and just uh, wash in some grout lines and then that way I can wipe off the top and get rid of um, anything that gets on the surface of the brick and the other thing is it'll weather the brick a little bit and since this is an industry it'll be uh, somewhat worn or, or dirty um, so that'll work out well. And then the other thing I did is I took uh, my blue painters tape and I went ahead and I cut out pieces to mask off the brick on this section. Now I can go ahead and airbrush this whole unit uh, or this whole uh, section and I don't have to worry about the brick getting uh, painted. So if some gets on it, you know, honestly I think that's okay because again, if if this was to be have been repainted in the past, you know, maybe some overspray got onto the brick, uh, painters didn't mask everything off. So one of the things I did do instead of wasting a long strip to get a single strip along the top here, I went ahead and uh, cut out individual pieces here in, in short strips and then just layered them up so when I'm done I should be able to just tear this all off because they're layered um, on one on top of each other. But that'll keep this, um, there's just like a decorative piece that goes along the top here so that'll stay this, you know, Iraqi sand color and then everything else will be. I gotta decide what the color scheme on this guy is gonna be. Uh, might go with that uh, red color that I used again just because I kinda like that. Maybe tinted a little bit but really like these um, Vallejo colors. I picked a couple more up today when I was at the hobby shop and uh, just gonna try and build a a catalog of these so I can have them on hand. Really well, really work well I mean with a cosmetic wedge or in the airbrush so so that's that. I got. Uh, I went outside quick and and uh, put a uh, primer on the windows themselves. So I'll also have to paint those. Well, I thought I'd better show this process just in case uh, you guys haven't seen this one before. But here's the uh, the repainted or the I should say the painted um, inserts that I'm going to be using. And um, these are this is just a Vallejo Iraqi sand color. And then I've got this mixture of just dirty brown and, and black and grimy black and uh, I use this this color um, for my trucks and couplers and stuff like that. Uh, what I've done though is I've watered it down with a little bit of uh, orange marmalade um, otherwise known as Windex and just to dilute it even further so it's nice and watery and um, then I go ahead and I just take my brush and and apply it right over the top of the the brick and it's a very thin wash but what it does really nice is it gets into the cracks in between the molded bricks and then when I come back and I just got a paper towel and I just wipe across it and I don't want to really dab I just want to wipe so I get the surface um, and and it'll leave most of the paint in the in the mortar lines and I don't know if it'll show up but uh, I think this one's a little light uh, I think the paint's getting a little too thin now um, I can come back with a second coat but again uh, you know working in lighter coats is always safer than uh, working in heavy coats it's, it's easier to undo or make it heavier than it is to try and make it lighter 
So one of the things I realized I've never really talked about <coughs> um, with the airbrush, because generally when I airbrush it's you know, it's noisy and you really can't see anything, but I kind of got the poor man's spray booth. Um, this is just an old box that a printer um, I bought came in and I lopped the sides off. I've got a, a lazy Susan in here, or if I want to be politically correct, a lazy Bob, I guess, whatever you want to call it. But um, this comes in really handy when you're weathering cars or engines and stuff like that because you can just spin them without having to handle them. So you can pop them down. Um, and then, uh, so I've always got a, a test piece of plastic in here. This is an old panel from a Pike Stuff kit. Uh, but you can see this thing's been painted so many times. But I like to test my, my coverage on this. Um, and when the box gets too ratty and old, I just toss it and, and grab a new one. I always work with non-toxic acrylic paints, so I uh, I really should have a spray booth, but I don't. Um, so here I'll just prop the building up against the backdrop here, and um, that'll be about it. As for my airbrush, I use a Iwata um, Eclipse. And I try and keep it in as best shape I can by cleaning it, obviously, after every use. But, you know, over time, there's just some paint that I've missed. It's usually on the outside. The inside is hopefully in better shape. Um, this is a double action, so you've got air control um, and paint flow control. Um, actually, it's, it's reverse of what I just showed. Uh, this is air control, and this is paint flow um, control here. Real easy to clean. It's, it's actually one of the best airbrushes that I've ever used. I'm not an expert by any means, um, but I really like the, the top feed. If I've got a lot of paint in there, I can put the cap on it and just press it down. Um, but, uh, but I, I really like it. And then, uh, I cut, uh, some notches into my box so I can just, um, so I kind of notch into my box here, and so then that way I can just prop it up there when I'm not using it, and then uh, fill the cup up, <clears throat> and then start spraying. Uh, again, I'm no expert, but my tools of the trade here, um, when I'm working with um, paint jars, I have this just block of styrofoam that I cut a circle out, and I can put the uh, jar inside of it, and then that way hopefully if I bump it, it's less likely to tip. Uh, this is actually the right size for the larger poly scale paints, but when I'm working with the the other thing I really like about the Vallejo paints is that they're in a squeeze bottle, so even if you tip them and the top is off, the spill is very minimal, if at all. So um, I've got an old medicine cup that I use as a mixing container. Uh, generally, I'll mix and dilute with uh, Windex. It cuts pretty well. It mixes well with uh, the Vallejo paints and with, uh, you know, I've got the Model Master acrylic here. and It cuts real well with these. doesn't dilute the color real, um, uh, real much, so that's nice. Uh, I've got some cotton swabs for cleaning the tip off while I'm painting, but then also clean up afterwards. And then some micro brushes. Oops. Um, some micro brushes which I use to clean um, the airbrush after I'm done. And then I've got these old uh, baby food containers filled with water. Uh, so after I'm done I can just throw everything in there to just soak a little bit and help break the paint up before cleaning. So again, uh, I'm no, no master, but uh, those are the tools of the trade. Uh, the other thing I use when I'm not using the Vallejos is old medicine uh, dispensers for kids. Uh, the great thing about these is you know, they're graduated or, you know, at least they've got measurements on it. So I can easily take in, say, let's say, you know, three measures of paint and then come back and do one measure and I've got a, a three to one mixture or two to one mixture or whatever that might be. It also makes it real easy to, um, you know, put it down into the jar, fill up with paint or um, Windex. So... I don't know how much you're going to be able to hear and see over the top of the uh, airbrush uh, compressor running, uh, but I went ahead and uh, thanks to Fishplate Films, um, he recommended that you thin your paint to a melt consistency. I've since started doing that and uh, I will say it really helps. Um, I wasn't thinning my paints enough and that's really critical to good airbrushing. Um, so. I like to just test it on uh, my sample pieces here. 
see how my coverage is. Make sure I'm getting a good coverage and then I start on the actual kit itself. Uh, unfortunately, I've kind of got to get in here so I don't know if this is going to work or not. So my favorite part of, of painting is always the finished product, of course. Um, and uh, I went ahead and went with a, what was this color? It was a um, medium green. And I thought that kind of had an industrial look. And I didn't go on too heavy with the gray undercoat and I just went on a little thinner you know their industrial windows I figured well we'll we'll see how this looks once the color combination and then I went with this Vallejo color that I picked up from the hobby shop today was called uh, flat earth um, and it's uh, it looks kind of like a chocolate brown almost but uh, my favorite part of, of painting especially when I mask is the reveal um, one, to see how well my mask worked, and two, just to see uh, the end result of, of my mask and, and, you know, how my, basically, what is my color palette and color selection any good? And, um, whoop, that didn't work like I hoped it would, but, um, Alright, so some good color separation there. I'm pretty pleased with that. So let's go ahead and do one of the uh, brick sections here. Actually, much easier to just do it from the back side. <laughs> well, so there we go. Quite good color separation, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and peel the rest of these off and then I'll show you the end result once I've got them done. I hope it shows up. I don't know how well this is going to show up, but I think the colors, um, well first of all the color separation worked out really well. Um, the, the brick really kind of stands out. Um, the only thing I'm a little disappointed with is I'm noticing some chipping in the paint and I think that's because I didn't prep the the surface of the structure real well. Uh, but that's okay. It's an industrial building. I can hide it with a little bit of weathering after I'm done. Uh, but I really like that the uh, the green works, I think, pretty well with the the browns um, and the like the tan color. Um, it kind of gives it an industrial look. So, so flash forward a little bit. I've got uh, all the windows glued into place. Well, I've got the, the mullions, I guess, or whatever we want to call these. Uh, but that's how the the colors turned out. I think it blends in pretty well, actually. I kind of like how it looks, a uh, industrial look, um, yet and and somewhat of a dated building, if you will. Um, so I've got everything glued into place. Uh, some of it needs to be glued a little bit more, um, but I can always come back and do that. I haven't put the glass in yet. I've got those all broken out and ready to go. But what I was working on is uh, Walther's in their kit included awnings uh, to go over the top of the um, loading bay doors. So what I did was I took this over to the layout and I measured a high Q box car figuring that's going to be the tallest box car that I'm going to fit under here um, and that will give plenty of clearance. And then what I did was these were actually a slightly longer uh, than I wanted them to be and I just kind of wanted them to be over the top of the bays and so I've got to go ahead and I I cut these down and to keep the end caps on them I trimmed them in the center here and I'll have to uh, blend this a little bit and then I'm gonna spray paint these and I might actually just keep them a gray color uh, you know maybe make them metal and then I'll probably work yeah I don't know if you can see it but there's wire or there's holes in here where you could just put a piece of wire so what I'm probably going to do is strip a piece of of solid gauge wire and wire it up wire it into here um, paint it just to look like guy wires if that's the right term I'm not positive so uh, I've marked the holes on here and I've just got to drill them now and then I'll put these in place there'll be one over each uh, loading and unloading bait all right well I went ahead and uh, spray painted the um, awnings or I don't really want to call them awnings but uh, the coverings I guess I don't, I don't know whatever we're gonna call these and I use a stippling technique that I've always used just with the aluminum uh, color to give them a metallic look and on the 
uh, fascia here. I drilled some holes and so these will be able to be mounted and I've got holes drilled here for some uh, just some wire to hang uh, help support these. And then the other thing I've done is I've gone ahead and I've applied the, uh, the glass in the back here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some white paint and just uh, see what happens if I fill in some of the squares from the back side and then put the black construction paper over the top to cover up the windows. So those will be the next steps here and we'll see how that turns out. So my uh, awnings are in, or coverings, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I've gone ahead and applied, uh, I went with uh, some white paint and then just some uh, lighter gray uh, just to show maybe some different panels replaced at different times. And then I went ahead and I put in just uh, some black construction paper and I used um, some of this tester's clear parts and cement uh, which so if, if it gets any into the glass itself it'll hopefully it'll show up clear but uh, so this is the the completed background building I guess um, pretty happy with how it turned out I'm gonna have to come back and uh, I put the brass wire in I <laughs> had enough I knew I kept these scraps around for a reason and I just had enough scrap pieces that uh, I was able to put those in. So I'm going to come back and probably paint those silver uh, just to finish that up and uh, probably maybe put in a couple of uh, light fixtures coming out um, maybe underneath. Someday maybe I'll actually light this um, for real uh, just to add a little added effect. But uh, for the most part that's uh, this one is uh, ready to go I think. All right, well, I think that's it for uh, part one. Uh, I wanted to keep this a little bit shorter. Uh, once I do the editing, we'll have to see. I, I kind of went off a little bit on the tangent with the, uh, the airbrush, and I know I touched on cleaning and, you know, probably uh, not necessarily anything ultra important there, but I uh, thought I'd share the type of airbrush that I used in case anybody was interested, and just to show how easy it was to clean it. Um, so that's background building number one complete. I think the next steps will be to uh, do the kit or the scratch building of the warehouse that I plan to have in between uh, the aggregate receiving area and then the building that I just finished here. So uh, hopefully in the next video too I'll, I'll actually apply it to the layout so you can see it in place. Uh, and then of course there's my favorite part is once we've got all the buildings done then the scenery will have to go in. Uh, none of that track is ballasted or anything like that. So the other thing I'm contemplating now that I look, look at it, I've got quite a long siding there um, and I might actually have uh, propane receiving but then also uh, tanks uh, for the asphalt itself. Um, you know, I think that would be, I've got some PVC pipe that I can maybe turn into uh, a couple of silos that I can have, or tanks that I can have as receiving. Um, that'll be another fun uh, scratch building project there. I need to get some more brass wire though to make handrails them all out. So, but uh, thanks as always to everyone. Uh, I'm glad everyone enjoyed the uh, train fest uh, tour. My son's been having a blast with his engine and uh, running trains and, and like I commented on one of my videos his trains uh, are apparently high priority uh, Z trains because uh, he always asks me if the main line is clear because he's running trains so hey whatever if that's what I got to do I'm happy to switch in the in the areas that I can and let him have the main line so thanks a lot everyone and we'll see you next video